Hello guys, and welcome to episode one of my new series, Redstoning with Steve. Now in this series, I'm going to try to show you some of the circuits I've got in and around Blue World, and more so try to both show and explain them. And this, this is because a lot of people, they see something on YouTube, some redstone stuff, have no idea how it's going on, and just really go and copy it into their world, but you don't really learn anything from that really. So I'm going to try to explain every single circuit to the full and hopefully in me doing that you can actually understand what's going on within the circuit rather than just know how the circuit's built. So yeah that, that's pretty much the point of the series and yeah this this series I've wanted to do for a little bit and well, there was one subscriber that kind of spurred me into action over it. It was on my teleporter video, I think, and he got onto me and he he admitted he had no idea what was going on inside the circuits, and he 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 actually asked me for some kind of lessons on how to do redstone. Now, <laughs> I don't really have time to go. No, no offense at all, but I just don't have the time to go and do something like that. I'm just I'm really strapped for time, especially around this time of year. And I actually offered a compromise for him. I said I'd definitely start a new series and yeah, in in this way I can not only help this guy, you know who you are, but I can also help everyone else. So that's pretty much the point of the series. And yeah, let's go see the world. So this is the new world guys, um, as you can see by my hotbar it's freshly created and I MC edited a whole square of it just to be iron. It's actually fast becoming probably one of my favourite blocks in the game, obviously a uh, lapis is still the best but uh, <laughs> um, so and, and I thought it gave kind of a testy test world feel as well so I, I like it to be honest. So. Basically, in this first video, we're going to be going through the basics, pretty much. We're going to be going right down to the foundation of redstone, wh what it really is, everything like that. Um, for you advanced redstoners out there, yeah, it will probably be a bit under you, but I really aim to give a full understanding of redstone in the series, and because of that, I'm going to start right at the bottom and work my way up. So. If you are an advanced redstoner, be sure to at least give the video a, a, a quick flick through. You may actually learn something that you didn't know before. So, yeah, guys, we're going to start with the basics, and we're going to start with the fundamentals of redstone. Now, I'm going to start off here by explaining at least what I believe to be the major components in a redstone circuit. Now, we have the redstone wire, the redstone torch, the repeater, and also the pistons. Now, I've let these separate for a reason, which I will explain in a sec. And we're going to start off here with the redstone wire. Now, the redstone wire is basically the backbone of any redstone circuit you want to do. Now, if you place a piece of redstone, it will be a single dot on the ground. And whenever you place one on any sideways adjacent block, it will turn into a line. And of course, you can bend this around corners as well and it will connect as such. Also with the redstone wire it will travel up and down blocks. Now this can be a problem in many redstone circuits. So for example if I wanted the wire to run here and down here and you can see there's a problem because I want it to run here but it's connecting here Luckily, with redstone wires, we can actually place a solid block here and here, and it will actually cut the wire, so to say. So, this is a really great way for forcing redstone wire to where you want to go. Now, it must be a solid block, so if we grab a transparent block, such as a stone slab, you can see it is not achieving this effect. It must be a solid block to use this effect. 
So next up we have the redstone torch. Now, the redstone wire was a pretty easy concept to grasp, I think, but the redstone torch, it can get a little tricky sometimes. Now, the main point about a redstone torch, and pretty much what makes it unique in every redstone circuit, is the fact that its default state is on. Now, every single component in a redstone circuit, when you place it, the default state is always off. But the redstone torch is on. And this makes it quite useful in redstone circuits. Now, basically, a redstone torch, as well as powering any redstone wire next to it, will also power blocks. So we may power this redstone wire because this redstone torch is providing power to this block. Now what an important note also is that redstone is able to power blocks and these blocks in turn are able to power any redstone device including redstone wire on the top and any around it as well. So following this if we are to place a redstone wire here since this block is being powered, it will also power anything immediately around it, all six sides. Well, all five sides, because you have to power it from somewhere. And you can see, I'll break this out, you can see it's powering all three redstone here. Another important note about redstone torches is that when you actually provide power to them, they turn off. Now, this is counterintuitive to every other redstone component because usually when you provide power to another redstone component, such as a piston or a glowstone lamp or something of the like, it will turn on. So this is another important feature about redstone torches. One more point to note about redstone torches is that they make vertical wiring very easy. So if we are to stack the torches as such, you can see they alternate off and on because this redstone torch is powering this block which causes this one to turn off as it is being powered. This block is receiving no power so this one is on so on and so forth and if we are to power this you can see all the torches invert their state which makes it very useful to transfer power upwards. Next up we have the ever useful repeater and the reason it's so useful is because it actually has three different distinct unique functions that, that all help to improve flexibility in a redstone circuit by a very very large amount. Now I have a set three setups over here. The first setup is showing the repeater acting as a repeater. So as I said before Redstone power will only run for 15 blocks. I think I said 16, but it's 15 blocks, and on the 16th, it will not be powered. So if we count this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And if we are to place a repeater here, we can still see it's still being powered. But if we are to place one more redstone and a repeater, you can see it's not being powered. So 15 blocks is the limit. Now if we want to extend past this limit, all we have to do is chuck a redstone repeater down and we are able to extend the signal for another 15 blocks. So on and so forth. The second of its functions is it acts as a diode. Now if you, those of you who don't want, know what a diode is, it means that it will only let current through one way. And if I grab a redstone torch here, we can see a redstone torch on this side is powering and since the repeater is pointing, let's see the little arrow there, is pointing this way, it will only let current through this way, not this way, which is why it's not being powered. Now if we remove this redstone torch and place it on the other side, we can see it is now being powered because we're powering it from the back, it will let current through the direction of the arrow and therefore will power it. The very last of its functions is a delay. So what we've got here is a very very simple clock and I'll, I will explain clocks in a later episode and basically we have a four torch delay and how you tell the delay is the repeater has, oh, I've screwed up the clock now, but 
The repeater has four settings. So we have one torch delay, two torch delay, three torch delay, four torch delay, and basically you change this by right clicking on it. I'll set up the yep, that's the right way. And what's happening here is a signal is sorry, the other way. A signal is fed through. There is a delay, a four torch delay between it hitting here and then the line being powered. So basically if we had these on any lower setting this clock would operate too fast and stop working as I showed before. And the delay is crucial to this setup. So very infin infinitely useful redstone repeaters and we'll move on to pistons now. And the last component which I chose to include and is not usually considered as a major part of redstone circuitry but from my experiences in Blue World I've found that pistons are a very very good component of redstone circuits. Now this is because they have a unique function of pulling and retracting blocks in case of the sticky piston. So if we grab a sticky piston in our inventory Now, we have a redstone line here, and usually if we chose to power it, maybe we'd do this. Okay, it's now powered, but if we wanted to power it a different way, we could also do this, and since the redstone torch is powering this block, this redstone line will be powered. But if we wanted to turn this off, this we'd have to do something like this with pistons. And you can see when we activate the piston, it will extend and retract as such. And because it's a sticky piston, it will also retract a block. And this sticky piston, when we extend it, will push the block over here and thus activate the circuit. Now this is a really simplistic example, I know. Um, you could do this much easier with a lever. But basically, I just wanted to kind of point out how pistons can be extremely useful not just in complicated circuitry but it can make things a lot simpler than just purely using all the redstone components so as usual you can power any redstone any any piston via a block next to it and also like such will power and there is a few more ways to power them that are actually glitches, but I won't go through them now. I'll leave that to a later episode. And yeah, guys. So to finish off this video, guys, I'm going to show you a couple of pieces of common circuitry in redstone circuits. And they're going to be the AND gate, the RS NOR latch, and an extension of the RS NOR latch, the monostable circuit. So we're going to start off with the AND gate here. and all you need to make an AND gate, it's very simple, three blocks in a row, torch on top, redstone wire in the middle, and a torch, and that is your AND gate component, and then just for your output, just put a wire, and for your input, just have two wires, and you don't, in fact, you don't even need these wires, but, in fact, no, I'll keep them there, just so we can spread it out a bit so it's easier to see what's going on. So these are our two inputs and this is our one output. And you can see our two outputs are off and our output is also off. Now the purpose of an AND gate and indeed what the AND part in AND gate means means that for the output to be on input A and input B, let's call them, must both be on. So input A and input B. So we can see if we turn input A on, see this torch depowered, but this one is still being powered, which is keeping this torch off. Our output is off. Now we're going to switch them, we're going to turn output A off and output B on, and you can see the same result. But if we are to turn both output A and B on, you can see both these torches are off and our output is on. So that's the basic AND gate guys. And now I'll move on to the RS NOR latch. So the RS NOR latch is probably the most 
widely used piece of circuitry in redstone and that's because it has an amazing amount of uses it's basically a one bit memory cell if you don't really know what I mean by that uh, don't really worry guys it's not really that complicated so we're gonna start by doing this and this is a much expanded version of the RS launch we're gonna do this and we're gonna place a torch on the other side as well and you can see they're both on at the moment now we're gonna take this torch and do this you can see we're running the output of this torch along here and we're pairing this block and you can see <sighs> sheepy and you can see now that we're pairing this block this torch is turned off now what we're also going to do is take this output I know it's not on but just bear with me and we're going to feed it back to here and now we need two buttons as such and you can see that we have two outputs here so we have the this let's call it input A uh, sorry output A should I say and output B so right now output B is currently activated now if you think about this if we were to click this button this block would be powered and this torch it's already off so it's going to be powered, it's going to stay off. Nothing's going to happen if we press this button. And nothing does happen. It does power this wire as well, but it's already on as well. So nothing's going to happen. But if we power this button, if you can imagine this torch is going to go off. However, this wire is also going to be powered, but it's not going to matter because this torch turns off and you can see it output A is now powered. And I'll just show you, if we click this side now, you can see the output switches. So, this is an RS null latch. RS null latches have two inputs, one on each block, or one on each input, should I say. And this allows you to, when you click either input, you it allows you to switch between both outputs, basically. So, Basically, if we were to switch it to this output and keep clicking this button, it would do nothing until we click this button to switch it to the other output. So this is what a one-bit memory cell basically is, guys. Basically, you can store memory on this side. This will stay on forever until you press this button. So it's storing memory, basically. So that's pretty much all there is to an RS null latch. Um, I will show you the more compact version. Um, all you have to do is two blocks diagonally, torch, torch, two, three, one, two, three. And your buttons or uh, inputs go on the outside. And that is the most compact version of an RS null latch. And now I'll end the video with um, uh, a monostable circuit. So that just about wraps it up for this episode, guys. Uh, I, I know it was quite basic for a lot of you, but I am planning to expand on a lot of this stuff later and include a lot more advanced stuff. Um, but I really just wanted to kind of cover a lot of the basics of Redstone before I really got into the harder stuff. Because, believe it or not guys, there are some guys out there that don't know how to do this stuff, have never learnt it. So, I just want, wanted to kind of appeal to everyone here and I promise next time I'm going to go over some much more advanced stuff and I'm especially looking forward to doing some more stuff with pistons in the future because that's a really big part of my uh, ventures in Blue World and I really am looking forward to sharing that kind of stuff with you guys so yeah that's pretty much it guys tell me if you like this video um, tell me what else I could put in and mostly I really want requests on stuff I could do in here so if you want to see a certain circuit explained in full detail at all I will well post it in the comments and I'll look at I always look at my comments guys I'll see it there and I will try and feature it in an upcoming episode so yeah apart from that guys hope you enjoyed this video and I will 
catch you next time.